Even before the Second World War, the famous German tank commander Heinz Guderian had predicted the need for highly mobile self-propelled anti-tank vehicles, later known as Panzerjäger or Jagdpanzer, tank destroyer or tank hunter. However, in the early years of the war, beside the 4,7 cm Panzerabwehrkanone C, Selbstfahrerfette auf Panzerkampfwagen 1 ohne Turm, which was in essence just a 4.7 cm Pak T gun mounted on a modified Panzer 1 Ausführung B tank hull, the Germans did little to develop such vehicles. During the invasion of the Soviet Union, the Wehrmacht encountered tanks which they had trouble dealing with effectively due to their thick armor, the T-34 and KV series and were forced to introduce a number of different hastily built and developed Panzerjäger based on any chassis that was available. From this, a series of vehicles generally known today as the Martyr, Martin, was created. The first such vehicle was built by using a captured French Lorraine 37L fully tracked armored tractor and arming it with the German 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. During Operation Barbarossa, the Panzer divisions were once again spearheading the German advance. As in the previous year in the West, Initially, the lightly protected Soviet early tanks such as the BT series and the T-26 proved to be easy prey for the advancing German panzers. However, the panzer crews were shocked to discover that their guns were mostly ineffective against the armor of the T-34, the KV-1, and KV-2. German infantry units also discovered that their 3.7cm Pac-36 towed anti-tank guns were of little use against these vehicles. The stronger 5cm Pac-38 towed anti-tank gun was only effective at short distances and it had not been produced in any great numbers by that time. Luckily for the German crews, the new Soviet tanks were plagued by a not yet matured design, inexperienced crews, a lack of spare parts and ammunition, and poor operational use. Nevertheless, they played a significant role in slowing down and eventually stopping the German assault in late 1941. In North Africa, the Germans also faced increasing numbers of Matilda tanks which also proved to be hard to knock out. The experience gained during the first year of the invasion of the Soviet Union raised a red alert in the highest German military circles. One possible solution to this problem was the introduction of the new Rheinmetall 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. It was first issued in very limited numbers at the end of 1941 and at the start of 1942. It became the standard German anti-tank gun used until the end of the war, with some 20,000 guns being built. It was an excellent anti-tank gun, but the main problem with it was its heavy weight, making it somewhat difficult to deploy and hard to manhandle. The solution to this problem was to mount the Pac-40 on an available tank chassis. These new Panzerjäger vehicles followed the same pattern. Most were open-topped, with limited gun traverse and thin armor. They were, though, armed with an effective anti-tank gun, and usually with one machine gun. They were also cheap and easy to build. Panzerjägers were, in essence, improvised and temporary solutions, but effective ones nevertheless. Just as the name suggests, Panzerjäger means tank hunter in English, they were designed to engage enemy tanks at long ranges on open fields. Their primary mission was to engage enemy tanks and to act as fire support at long range from carefully selected combat positions, usually on the flanks. This mentality led to a series of such vehicles named Martyr that was developed using many different armored vehicles as a basis. The first series of Martyrs were based on captured French armored vehicles. While a small series were built using tank chassis, the majority were built using captured Lorraine 37L fully tracked armored tractors. The Lorraine 37L would also be converted into a self-propelled artillery piece. The man responsible for the creation of the first Martyrs was Major, Major Alfred Becker. His design was presented to Adolf Hitler in May of 1942, who immediately ordered that 100 armed with 10.5cm and 15cm artillery guns and 60 Pac-40 armed vehicles should be built. Due to the high demand for self-propelled anti-tank vehicles, the majority of the available captured Lorraine 37Ls would be converted into Martyr 1s, as the vehicle would come to be known. After the First World War, the French army had shown interest in developing a tracked armored supply vehicle. The first vehicle that was adopted for this role was the small Renault UE during 1935. The Lorraine company began working on a faster alternative for this vehicle meant for the cavalry units. By 1937, the first prototype of the Lorraine 37L was completed. Its performance was deemed sufficient by the French army and ordered into mass production. It was mainly used for transport of ammunition, fuel, and other supplies. There was also an infantry support variant, Vitablande de Chasse Porte 38L, which can be identified by an added box-shaped armored superstructure mounted to the rear. 
From 11th of January 1939 to 16th of May 1940, over 400 Lorraine 37L armored supply vehicles were built. By the time of France's capitulation, the Germans had managed to capture some 337L vehicles. In German service, these vehicles were known as Lorraine Schlepper. During its service life, this self-propelled anti-tank gun was known under several different names. On 1st of August 1942, it was known as the 7,5 cm Panzerabwehrkanone 40 aus Selbstfallerfetter Lorraine Schlepper, which stands for 7.5 cm anti-tank gun model 40 on self-propelled mount Lorraine tractor. In May 1943, the name was changed to 7,5 cm Panzerabwehrkanone 40 Strich Eins auf Selbstfallerfetter Lorraine Schlepper. In August 1943, it was again changed to Panzerjäger Lorraine Schlepper Feuer 7,5 cm Panzerabwehrkanone 40 Strich Strich 1 Sonderkraftfahrzeug 135. It received the Martyr 1 name, by which it is best known today, due to Adolf Hitler's personal suggestion made at the end of November 1943. Following the decision to adopt the Martyr 1 into service on 9th June 1942, the German Waffenamt, Ordnance Department, laid out the plans for a number of vehicles to be built by Becker Baukommando Workshop located in Paris and the HKP Bilitz Workshop. The main supplier of the Martyr 1 components was Alket. This firm was responsible for modifying the Pac 40's lower carriage and gun shield, but also for the assembly of the upper superstructure for the Martyr 1 vehicle. The monthly production target in Paris was 20 vehicles in June 1942 and 78 in July, with an additional 30 in June and 50 in July from Bielitz. In total, 178 were planned to be converted. The actual production numbers were a bit lower, with 170 rebuilt vehicles completed. 104 were converted in July and the remaining 66 in August of 1942. Unfortunately, the exact number of rebuilt vehicles depends on the source. While the number of 170 is quite commonly found in the literature, there are still some disagreements between the sources. The previously mentioned production numbers according to T. L. Jens and H. L. Doyle, Panzer Tracks No. 7-2 Panzerjäger, the author Walter J. Spielberger in his book Beutekaufahrzeuge und Panzer der Deutschen Wehrmacht mentions that 184 were planned, but 170 were actually built. D. Neschich mentions 179 vehicles being built. And finally, author A. Ludicke of Waffentechnik im Zweiten Weltkrieg lists a number of 184 total vehicles being built. The Martyr 1 suspension consisted of six road wheels placed on each side, suspended in pairs and placed on three bogies. Above each bogey, a leaf spring was placed. There was also four return rollers, front drive sprockets, and an idler placed on each side at the rear. The transmission was placed in the front hull of the vehicle. The Lorraine 37L suspension was a very robust and simple design. This was rather uncommon among pre-war French tank designs, which generally had overly complicated suspension systems. In its original role as an armored tractor, the Lorraine 37L had little problems following French tanks on good or muddy terrain. The German version had an increased weight of up to 8.5 tons, 7.5 or 8 tons depending on the source, compared to the original 6 tons. While the Lorraine 37L suspension system was considered adequate in its original role, the added extra weight proved to be problematic, especially on the Eastern Front, mostly due to low temperatures and muddy roads. In addition, the enormous stresses caused by firing the main gun put extra wear on the suspension, which increased the chance of malfunctions or damage. The Martyr 1 engine type and its position were not changed from the original Lorraine 37L. The Delaye Type 135 six cylinder water cooled 70 horsepower at 2800 RPM engine was located in the center of the vehicle's hull. While the maximum speed of this engine was a solid 35 km per hour, the cross country speed was really only around 8 km per hour. The operational range was also quite limited, with 120 km on good roads and 75 km across country. The low speed on bad roads and the small operational radius is possibly the main reason why the Martyr 1 was mostly allocated to infantry divisions. The exhaust pipe was located on the left side of the hull and was protected by a thin curved armored plate. The Martyr 1's fuel capacity was 111 liters. The Martyr 1 was built using mostly unmodified Lorraine 37L chassis. By simply replacing the original rear position transport compartment with a new armored superstructure, the new armored superstructure had a relatively simple design, which consisted of rectangular armored plates welded together. 
These armored plates were angled in order to provide additional protection, as the armor thickness was generally quite low. The front of this armored superstructure was protected by the main gun's enlarged gun shield. The Martyr I was an open-topped vehicle, and for this reason, a canvas cover was provided to protect the crew from bad weather. Of course, this offered no real protection during combat. The added superstructure served as a crew fighting compartment for operating the main gun. Due to the Martyr I's tiny size, the crew compartment offered a small working space. The Lorraine 37L, being designed to fulfill the role of a supply vehicle, was only lightly armored. The front armor was around 12mm thick, while the top and bottom were only about 6mm thick. The superstructure thickness, depending on the source, is usually noted around 10 to 11 millimeters all around thickness. Luckily, the tank encyclopedia team was given access to the Martyr I Auf Geschützwagen Lorraine Schlepper F at the French Tank Museum in Samur, France. A digital micrometer was used to measure the armor thickness of the upper superstructure. When books state that the armor thickness was 11 millimeters, this is the design thickness. In reality, the rolled armor plate used by the Germans was not of a precise thickness. It varied over the length of the plate within a certain tolerance range. It should be remembered that these measurements included the thickness of the primer base coat and final coat of the paint. The main gun chosen for the Martyr I was the standard 7.5cm Pac-40-1 L46. This gun, with its slightly modified mount, was placed above the engine compartment. Its original two-part armored shield was replaced with a single enlarged shield covering the front of the superstructure. The elevation of the main gun was a negative 8 degrees to plus 10 degrees, or negative 5 degrees to plus 22 degrees depending on the source, and traverse negative 20 to plus 20, negative 16 to plus 16 depending on the source. The total ammunition load also differs depending on the source. According to Hilary Doyle in German Military Vehicles, G. Parada, W. Stirna, and S. Jablonski in Martyr 3, the Martyr 1 could carry 40 rounds. However, authors T. L. Jens and H. L. Doyle, Panzer Tracks No. 7-2 Panzerjäger, mentions a number of 48 rounds. In order to relieve the stress on the elevation and traverse mechanisms during long drives, a travel lock was added. Secondary armament consisted of one 7.92mm MG-34 machine gun, and possibly the crew's personal weapons. Interestingly, there is a photograph of a Martyr I armed with the 5cm Pac-38. More information on the circumstances under which this modification occurred is unfortunately lacking. It could have been either a field modification, which is very likely, or a simple training vehicle. It could be also a post-war modification possibly done by the French. What is interesting is the front of the gun shield has an added armor plate around the gun. According to T. L. Yates and Hilary Doyle in Panzer Tracks No. 7-2 Panzerjäger, the Martyr I had a crew of four which consisted of the commander, gunner, loader, and the driver. Other sources, for example G. Parada, W. Stirna, and S. Jablonski, Martyr III, give a crew number of five members. The reason why authors state different information regarding the number of crew members is not clear. To complicate matters further, there are old photographs of the Martyr I with three or four crew members in the rear fighting compartment beside the driver who was in his own compartment at the front. The driver was positioned inside the Martyr I hull and was the only crew member that had all-around armor protection. To reach his own position inside the vehicle, a horizontally positioned two-part rectangular shaped hatch was used. For observation, there are two simple vision slots in the front and one on each side. While these had a simple design, the Germans never replaced them, probably to save time or simply because they had nothing better at hand. The remaining crew members were placed in the armored superstructure compartment. The gunner would be positioned to the left of the gun. On the front of the gun shield, there was a small armored slide that could be opened for use of the gun sight. To the right of the gun was probably the position occupied by the commander, and behind him was the loader. If there was a fifth crew member, he would likely have been a radio operator for the Funka Funf radio set, or an assistant loader. If there were only four crew members, another crew member would have served as a radio operator. The Martyr I was used to equip smaller anti-tank companies, Panzerjäger Compagnie. These were allocated as reinforcement to the anti-tank battalions, Panzerjäger Abteilungen, mostly of infantry and a few panzer divisions. The anti-tank companies were initially equipped with nine Martyr I vehicles. From early 1943, the number of vehicles per company was usually increased by one more vehicle. The Martyr I would mostly see service in France, but also on the Eastern Front and in smaller numbers in North Africa. The majority of newly built Martyr I vehicles would be used by units stationed in France. It was standard practice that the unit equipped with the Martyr I would retain its vehicles until it was relocated to another front. 
When that happened, they would be supplied with another self-propelled anti-tank vehicle or with towed 7.5cm Pac-40 guns. This was done mostly to ease maintenance and procurement of spare parts. During late June 1942, the German High Command Oberkommando des Hilles, OKH, predicted that at least 20 modern ones would be ready for operational field test trials by the end of July 1942. Two Panzer Divisions, the 14th and 16th, were initially chosen for this purpose. In July, the OKH decided that the first modern ones were instead to be given to the 15th, 17th, 106th, and 167th Infantry Divisions, and to the 26th Panzer Division once they were available in sufficient numbers. The 15th Infantry Division received its nine Martyr I vehicles by late July 1942. On 21st January 1943, the 15th Infantry Division received an additional 12 Martyr III vehicles based on the Panzer 38T. Its Martyr I's were given to the 158th Reserve Division. The 17th Infantry Division received nine Martyr I's by the end of July 1942. Their use by this unit was problematic from the start due to a lack of radio operators and mechanics. Additional problems were created by the inexperience of the drivers with such fully tracked vehicles. The height of some of these drivers was also problematic, as they had issues entering their positions inside the Martyr I hull. One interesting fact was that the driver would leave the vehicle prior to the firing of the main gun. The capacity of the inboard batteries was also too weak. For example, they would usually be discharged after only one hour of using the radio with the engine off. This would result in the batteries having no power to start the engine. Then, it had to be manually started by two crew members using a hand crank, which in practice proved to be difficult to do. One more big flaw of the vehicle was noted during a long off-road march, with the accumulating mud and earth that could lead to the loss of the rear idler wheels. At least two vehicles were reported to have lost their rear idler. The 106th Infantry Division operated an anti-tank company with nine Martyr I vehicles after late July 1942. One command vehicle based on the Panzer I and six ammunition transport vehicles based on the Panzer I were also available. In late February 1943, the 106th Infantry Division was repositioned to the Eastern Front and the Martyr I vehicles of the anti-tank company were replaced with nine towed 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank guns. The 167th Infantry Division had nine Martyr I vehicles up to late January 1943. When it was sent to the Eastern Front in late February 1943, all the Martyr I's were replaced with nine towed 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank guns. The 26th Panzer Division operated a company of Martyr I vehicles for a short time from 1st January to the 1st of May 1943. These vehicles will be replaced with Martyr III's in late February 1943. During 1943, many more units stationed in France would also be reinforced with Martyr I vehicles before they were relocated to other fronts. The number of supplied Martyr I vehicles varied between each division. For example, the 94th Infantry Division received 14, while the 348th Infantry Division received only 5. By the end of 1943, there were 94 Martyr I's with 83 operational vehicles in Western Europe. In total, at the start of 1944, there was 131 Martyr I's available. The last known unit that received a company of 10 vehicles was the 245th Infantry Division on the 13th of May 1944. The Martyr I would see extensive action during the Allied Normandy landings in June 1944. While they managed to achieve some success, nearly all were lost with the German defeat in France. The 719th Infantry Division was the last unit to still possess seven, with three operational Martyr I's, on 27th of January, 1945. Interestingly, at the end of the war, the Belgian resistance managed to capture one Martyr I vehicle. As stated previously, OKH plans for the Martyr I stated that it was to be used to equip units stationed in France in order to ease maintenance and procurement of spare parts. But, as the demand for such vehicles on the Eastern Front was great, the original plans had to be changed. Through direct orders from the OKH, dated 9th August 1942, six divisions from Hillsgruppe Mitte were to be equipped with Martyr I anti-tank companies. The 31st Infantry Division was reinforced with a Martyr I anti-tank company on the 27th of August 1942. Due to harsh conditions and strong Soviet resistance, by the end of June 1943, this unit had only four Martyr I's left. By the end of October, the last three Martyr I's were given to Panzerjäger Abteilung 743. At the start of 1944, none of these were still operational, with two requiring extensive repairs, while the third could not be repaired. 
The 35th Infantry Division received its Martyr Ones by the start of September 1942. By the end of 1943, only two non-operational vehicles were available. The 36th Motorized Infantry Division was to be reinforced with a Martyr I company that was initially attached to the 2nd Panzer Division. By the start of December 1942, all nine vehicles were operational, the last Martyr I vehicle being lost in July of 1943. The 72nd Infantry Division received nine Martyr I vehicles together with six Muni Anhinga ammunition and supply wheel trailers on 3rd September 1942. When the vehicles arrived, it was noted that there were issues with the breech lock mechanism which had to be repaired. Additional problems with transmission breakdowns were also noted. What is interesting is that the Martyr One Company also had a Panzer 38T that probably acted as a command vehicle. By the end of June 1943, there were seven Martyr Ones operational with the last vehicle being lost by the end of the year. One Martyr One Company was to be allocated to the 206th Infantry Division but this company was instead given to the 72nd Infantry Division. This caused a delay in the delivery of the first five Martyr One vehicles up to the end of 1942, with the remaining arriving in January the following year. By the end of June, there were eight vehicles with five operational. By the end of 1943, there were still seven vehicles with only five operational. The last unit on the Eastern Front that received the Martyr One was the 256th Infantry Division. Initially, it had eight Martyr One vehicles in its inventory dated from 3rd November 1942. At the start of 1943, there were 9 Martyr Ones with 8 operational. By the end of the year, the number of vehicles was reduced to 7 Martyr Ones, with only 3 operational. The 256th Infantry Division would be reinforced with 3 additional Martyr One vehicles in early 1944. While the Martyr One had sufficient firepower to destroy any enemy tank in 1942 and 43, the Soviet weather simply proved too much for the Lorraine 37L chassis. This can be seen in a combat report made by Panzerjäger Abteilung 72, belonging to the 72nd Infantry Division, which states, As experience has shown, these Martyr I don't have any significant combat value because of their limited employability due to the weather. In another report made by Panzerjäger Abteilung 256, it is stated that, with the exception of the Martyr I, the other weapons and vehicles have been proven useful. Due to bad weather, low numbers, problems with spare parts, and others, not many Martyr I's would be used on the Eastern Front, and they would be replaced with Martyr II and Martyr III vehicles which were built on more reliable chassis. While the majority of the Martyr I's would be used on the Western and Eastern Fronts, few would also be found in North Africa. The 334th Infantry Division was to be resupplied with a Martyr I company and, for this reason, the crewmen necessary to operate these vehicles were sent to the Spemba Training Center at the start of December 1942. After the completion of the crew training, which lasted two weeks, this company with nine Martyr I's and six ammunition transport vehicles were to be transported from Naples to Tunisia by using the large ME-323 transport planes. By the 1st of March 1943, there were eight vehicles operational with four under repair. Due to losses, this company was reinforced with Martyr III vehicles based on the Panzer 38T chassis in early April 1943. Two Martyr Ones, together with a group of Martyr Threes, participated in the defense of the Cairo Online against Allied tanks. In the following engagement, seven enemy tanks were destroyed with the loss of one Martyr I and five Martyr Threes. While nearly 200 vehicles were built, only one Martyr I still exists and can be seen at the Musée de Blinde in Samour, France. The Martyr I Tank Hunter was an attempt to solve the problem of the low mobility of towed anti-tank guns, but it failed in many other aspects. The most obvious was the fact that it was built on a captured chassis which led to logistical problems, as spare parts for it would be difficult to find. The low armor thickness meant that while it could engage enemy tanks at range, any kind of return fire would likely mean the destruction of the vehicle. The Martyr One's armor provided the crew with only basic level of protection against rifle rounds or shrapnel. Its speed and operational range were also not too impressive. The suspension and the running gear were also not adequate for the weather conditions present on the Eastern Front. In conclusion, the Martyr One vehicle was far from perfect, but gave the Germans a means to increase the mobility of the effective Pac-40 anti-tank gun, thus giving them a chance to fight back against enemy armored formations. This reading was performed by Many Miles Away. I hope you enjoyed this article.